Seamus O'Brien, Chairman of the Rural Business Committee. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I thought the discussion group was complex until I came to this stage, because it's more complex, but bear with me in that we had a considerable number of delegates in our discussion group, and I have to say we had a very constructive uh, and positive discussion on the role of uh, co-op model in the emerging uh, multiples of artisan food co-ops throughout the country. Uh, we were using the title, uh, using the co-op model to strengthen the artisan food supply chain. Now we've gone through, I suppose, many and varied periods in recent years, the Tiger years and the austere years, and as a result of those years we see an enormous amount of artisan uh, businesses creeping up all over the country, and one of the main group of those are little food businesses. And those people don't seem to know much about the cooperative idea, and we began by discussing that aspect of it. But we had um, a number of speakers, there were Jerry Riley from CMP, Anya Mackin Walsh from Chagish, Kenneth O'Connor Food at Canaby, Nicholas Dunn from Killown Yogurt, who are part of the new uh, Irish Food Co-op Group in the southeast, which is a, a multiple of those little food businesses that have really showed initiative in setting up a small artisan co-op in recent times. Well, it's gone now for about a year, and with many teething problems they're very happy at where it's progressing, mainly in the distribution area. Now we were facilitated in our discussion by Suzanne Campbell, the journalist, and we had input from uh, a number of our uh, delegates at the, the discussion. Uh, we could have had an awful lot more, but we just hadn't time. And I have to recognise the contribution from Declan uh, Rice from Kilkenny Leader Partnership, uh, Norman Reeds from Dublin Food Cooperative, Margaret Sweeney Country Markets, Gillian Westock from the Irish Organic Growers, Jim Russell of Centenary Turles and Lockmore uh, Community uh, cooperative shop, uh, which has only recently been established. There are about three or four hundred of these shops in the UK, and it's the first initiative in Ireland, and for a short period in opposite operation, it's going extremely successful. Now, the main points that uh, came from the discussion uh, was, I suppose, there is great development for artisan food cooperatives and if you go to any show or bloom or any of those type of activities across the country particularly all during the summer you will see the outstanding array of these little uh, groups on display and it shows the enthusiasm and contribution of particularly youngish people who have s saw an opportunity and have grasped the opportunity but they are producers, they are processors, but generally not marketers, are not, are not people who are in a position to distribute their goods. Uh, programs like, for example, a recent one set up a food academy between Musgraves and the local enterprise offices and Borbia. It's working now for about a year, and Kenneth O'Connor gave us a background of that, how that group is working. It's working extremely well, uh, but uh, he would recognise, and others involved, that the co-op model or the co-op vehicle would fit that type of activity uh, extremely well. Support and information about cooperatives needs to be provided uh, to start up businesses. Uh, and it's, it's a deficiency there at the present time because if you go to any of those areas that I spoke about and mention a cooperative, uh, the majority, in, mac in fact nearly 100% of them would have said they never heard of the co-op idea. And that is a serious deficiency and that is a major challenge to us in ICOS. Food producers are distinct in nature and focused on getting their product to the market, uh, considering a co-op structure is not in the plans at this stage. And that is the challenge that I've just spoken about. And uh, it's a question of what resources we can put into it. But there are so many other cooperatives, for example, all the dairies and marketing cooperatives around the country, should be able to help us because in many cases it's farmers' sons and daughters that are the people setting up these little artisan co-ops. Lessons learned. Um, HACCP, the food regulation body, is the regulatory body and it's getting its teeth 
deeper into all these little businesses because they're dealing in food. And while it's necessary, but it, 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 it can be severe. And when you're dealing with a product like food, as I remember Paddy Wall here last year saying one small slip by a producer can have serious consequences. So we have to recognise the need for regulation. But regulation needs to, needs to be, I suppose, enforced in a way that gives people a chance to get off the ground. And we use the example of the sustainability programme now coming on stream, particularly in dairy cooperatives, where the co-ops themselves go to the farm prior to the, uh, the, the visit from the inspector uh, so that they are prepared and know what is expected of them. And we believe that that would be an important procedure. Uh, some companies at the beginning don't see the necessity of the advantages of a co-op structure at the time when they're being set up or uh, they don't see the, the needs. But quickly, when distribution becomes a problem, that's not the rare area of expertise. Uh, they do see the advantages, but they've got to be trained and learned and educated. Educate to cooperate, in other words. That is a, a formula that, that must be pursued by us or any agency that are involved in trying to impart the, the knowledge or the idea of a co-op model. Uh, we in ICOS, I believe, have a responsibility, and we have, we have actually in the last year visited people like Board Bia, who are doing a wonderful job in that area, but don't seem to know or understand the effectiveness or the workings of a cooperative. And we need to be able to approach all of those agencies, so to bring the message of the cooperative idea and the value of the cooperative model to them. Next steps, uh, consideration of actions on the back of the lessons learned from our discussion today. These should be undertaken by ICOS in conjunction with the development agencies I've mentioned. Communications uh, of the benefits of the cooperative model should be circulated among food companies and their supporting agencies. And, and that needs to be done presently because we're in an ideal time in which uh, there are so many of these little businesses starting and things could change dramatically in the next year or two years and we'd lose we'd lose the boat or miss the boat and it's important that we do it now, not tomorrow. And ICOS to engage further in monitoring agencies at early stages but also to, to, revert, when, uh, to revert when food companies have emerged out of the start-up stage. I'm saying that because people start to, to formulate an idea and uh, the downstream issues are the least of their concerns. So you don't want to come in too early, but come in at the right stage to help them to go to the next stage. So, ladies and gentlemen, in brief, that's uh, a summary of what I consider an excellent discussion this afternoon here. Thank you very much, Chairman.